Mr. Hubbard saw Chicago change for Transform from a frontier outpost to um, kind of a metropolis. Um, he served as an INM Canal Commissioner. He was actively involved in advocating for the canal and supporting it and getting it to be created. Um, so he had a strong relationship with the canal because he was very supportive of it and was very active in bringing it to fruition. Earlier, waterways were kind of like the interstate highways of the um, 19th century. So like today, consumers wanted their goods as quickly as possible. So when they built the canal, um, and the canal itself connects um, Lake Michigan to the Mississippi River via the Illinois. So you get on a canal boat at Chicago, you travel down here to where we are at LaSalle, you would get on a, a steamboat and travel down the Illinois River to the Mississippi. And so basically what it did was it connected the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River, which was huge because then people from the south could ship their goods north, People from the east could ship their goods west and vice versa. So it opened, it was the last kind of link in a national plan to connect to the nation by waterways. Unfortunately, Illinois was the last of these canals, and so it's only a couple of decades that there's a real boom of passenger traffic. Um, so that's one of the ways. So, um, so with people, with the idea of the canal in the 20th century, um, before the canal, um, I have a date here, in 1818, so when the canals when, 18, when Illinois becomes a state, um, southern Illinois is where most of the population is. So almost everybody lived in the southern part of the state. So when they start talking about building the canal, um, so when the canal actually, actually starts being built, the population of Chicago is about 4,000. During its construction, it triples to 12,000. And within months of opening of the canal, the population is up to 20,000. And by, 18, by the 1850s, more than half the popu uh, population of Illinois lived in, northern, in the northern part of the state, the majority of them along either in Chicago or along the Illinois-Michigan Canal. So the canal itself affected the population of the state of Illinois um, in the 20th century. And then also Chicago. Um, Chicago's rapid development in the 19th century is um, tied to the canal in many ways. Um, in fact, it became the country's greatest inland port. Um, so the year the canal opened was also the year the Chicago Board of Trade opened. Um, and that was to take advantage of the grain. And in fact, um, you know, later with Chicago becomes the like meat pack, it becomes big for the meat packing industry, which, you know, they ship it on rail cars. Well, originally hogs and cattle were brought to Chicago on canal boats. So all the things, it also became known as like the, the bread kind of, like the grain capital of the world. Well, that they originally started coming in on canal boats. So all those things started with canals. So it was kind of like the first transportation system that, you know, was then supplanted by the other waterways as well as um, the railroads. So the other big thing for Chicago is that previous to the canal, St. Louis was considered the premier city in the West, Midwest. But after the canal opens, Chicago kind of takes us away. So Chicago is still the, pre the premier city of the it Midwest. It did become, in 1984, it became a national heritage area, which is the first um, national heritage area in the nation. Um, it was kind of the first private, public, pro it's kind of a new type of national park, kind of. And so that is kind of, what we're going into the 21st century, that's kind of what it's remembered as. It's important to sh Chicago's history, but it's also a national um, heritage corridor, heritage area.